and playing. Absolutely. Number two. So schools are going to be reopening in just over a month. And with COVID cases and hospitalizations going up again, what can students and their parents expect this fall? We know this is a really important question for so many of you. I should include teachers and staff as well. Mm -hmm. So we have invited State School Superintendent Chris Rakedahl to join us now. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for always joining us. And and I can't tell you how much we appreciate that, that whether it's for situations like this or talking about tough topics, that you are always so willing to come on and talk. And that, that is really appreciated. So let's talk about some of the credible scenarios that you're looking at for this fall based on what we know right now, the guidance going out, the modeling that you've gotten from public health officers. Are you expecting to be still fully in person this fall? Yes. Our direction to districts is that we are going to provide a fully in-person five-day-a-week option for every single family and student who wants it. Uh, The may part is districts may provide a remote option for the families who want that, Uh, but but we're not going to make this decision this year that we're going remote. We are going to be in-person. Uh, It won't look like it did three years ago or two years ago, but a little more like last spring where students are still going to have to wear face coverings as well as staff. The governor just reiterated that uh, yesterday. Obviously, we hope by now we could start giving some choice to families about that. Uh, But this Delta variant is, quite frankly, a very different beast than we saw in the earlier variants. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. How, How exactly does this Delta variant change things? I think what we were seeing in the epidemiological curves was a reduction in cases, therefore reduction in hospitalizations, reductions in mortality in the state under the earlier ones. So we could really model this this notion that we'd come back this fall, maybe only require masks for those who are unvaccinated or even give families the ability to kind of opt out because we would we would expect that we were close to this herd immunity concept. This is so different. Um, based on studies in Israel, England, and at least one uh, study in the United States now, students are big carriers of this uh, variant. Thankfully, still not getting really sick, but more of them are getting sick. More young people are being hospitalized, but they're carrying it like any adult would, um, and therefore they're shedding virus and infecting others. That's why we got to stick with masks for a bit longer. Chris, are you expecting any kind of pushback as far as going back fully in person from the unions, the teachers union? Well, I think each local uh, district has its own relationship. Um, What they have to do is follow the law (laughs) and both uh, the the, the law of how we budget and the governor's proclamations and orders have the power of law. And so we expect that they're going to fully come back. Now, the best thing about this year compared to last year is every adult has a chance to vaccinate. And we think those numbers are really high for our adults in our schools. All of our students over the age of 12 have had a chance to vaccinate. So not only are we vaccinated at higher levels and we're masking this fall, along with our other mitigation strategies, uh, it will be very safe and a very healthy opening. Uh, But they gotta work through that and they gotta make sure that uh, they really believe in the the safety protocols that are in place in each district. We're starting to see uh, mandates or requirements, vaccine requirements, uh, both for government workplaces and uh, private businesses. Uh, do, do you think public school employees should be required to be vaccinated? Um, I do, uh, but that's a decision that's going to come from uh, the governor ultimately on the, uh, on the adults, on the employees in school. The student vaccine requirement actually comes through our state board of health following a long process with the feds. So we don't expect that this year at all for students. We don't expect that there's any mandate for vaccine uh, for students this year, uh, even the ones who are currently eligible. Uh, But it is within the legal authority of governors and uh, across the country to require public employees to vaccinate or go through routine testing if they choose not to vaccinate. And I do think that would be appropriate given the public health crisis we face today. Chris, you know that one, well, I think one of the state's highest paid employees, a coach from Washington State University, the football coach, has opted not to. We don't know the reasoning behind it, but there are people who support him in that, and then there are people who say he should be fired. You are in the camp of you think that public school employees should be required 
to get vac- vaccinated. What is your argument for that? Well, again, it's a public health emergency, and there are lots of professions where you have to vaccinate as a condition of employment. And while we typically think of those as internal medicine and other high-risk work, this thing was so deadly to people. We've lost over 600,000 American lives, um, over you know 6,000 Washingtonians, that it just compels us to be at a higher level of safety. And I think it's not inappropriate. Now, anytime I say I believe in mandatory vaccines, you got to know that I believe in an individual's right um, to have an option out of that. And in this case, what you see uh, coming now from the federal government and others is that employees will be required to test routinely. If you're not, if they're not going to vaccinate, which is their right, they have to go through aggressive, regular testing. Um, and that would be an appropriate uh, response. I, I wish uh, that coach at WHU would show some more leadership and do this based on the science. Um, if he has another reason, I certainly understand that, and I wish he would express it. Uh, but unfortunately, when public leaders and high-paid leaders um, don't explain their reasoning um, and take an action in violation of the obvious science, it, it empowers other people to believe the misinformation. And that's what's frustrating about that is the lack of transparency. Chris, one of the things that you talked about early in the pandemic when we were talking about how to make sure that kids have access to education is that so many students, especially in lower income neighborhoods, did not have access to computers. Are we better prepared for that? Should we be in a position where they would have to go remote? Yeah, we really are. Uh, By the time we got through about the middle of last year, we had deployed over 300,000 devices to those who didn't have it. So we really closed, almost eliminated that hardware gap. We still can't close the connectivity gap because there are places that are just absolute deserts for high speed. So it is still not an equitable environment. It's why I'm working so hard to make sure our schools are open for every family who wants it. Uh, But let's face it, if we had to go through that again, which I don't expect, we are significantly more prepared than we were a year ago. That's great news. Chris, we as a show are really working hard, and it is very hard, let me tell you, to try to work through the misinformation. And this is a statement that we have from one of our state representatives, uh, Newhouse, who is calling on the governor to believe in science, this is a quote, and stop discouraging, wait a minute, so he said, so Governor Inslee has once again, this is a quote, he has once again hastily and ignored science by mandating mask wearing for teachers and students for a school year that is weeks away from beginning. Not only are children at decreased risk of COVID-19, but they have already experienced a year and a half of devastating losses in learning and critical effects on their mental and emotional health. That is a quote. Can you respond to that? Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of ideology out there, um, and people use terms very loosely. (laughs) So the science in this case is whether or not a sneeze or a cough can escape the immediate radius of your body and infect others. And obviously, what Department of Health has, if you go to their uh, website, uh, doh.wa.gov, and tons of researchers from around the world will tell you that a face covering significantly reduces the volume of droplets that leave your person uh, and potentially infect others. It's a no-brainer. Masks create more safety. They're not perfect, though. So from a health standpoint, the science is very clear about masking uh, and distancing. The learning loss is not um, is not inappropriate to bring up. Uh, it looks like it's about three or four months on average out of about a oh, 150 months of learning for students from kindergarten to 12th grade. Uh, there's about a three or four month slip here that we have to make sure we reaccelerate. So obviously we put in resources to do that. We're really focused on reading and math. We know we can catch up. We had unprecedented summer programs. So we're very aware of that um, and we're mitigating that uh, as, as much as we can. But from a science standpoint, it's just absolutely inappropriate to claim that masking is not part of the layered strategy for public safety and public health. You said that kids do spread this variant, and so I uh, just want to ask again, is is there any chance that you'll have to shift positions and encourage full remote learning or short-term shutdowns for schools if outbreaks occur? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a really good question. We don't anticipate any full shutdowns at all. Again, a, a year ago, we didn't have anyone vaccinated. Now we've got this huge percentage of folks in most counties. Some are still lagging. We have a lot of our uh, middle school and high school students who are vaccinated, and that number continues to grow. So we don't expect to have to do any kind of shutdowns. The irony is if we don't get more people vaccinated and we don't mask up, what you will see, as you just described, Aaron, is this reality that uh, we'll have quarantining. We will have more outbreaks, and therefore students will have to be dismissed for 10 to 14 days, immediately hit that switch and jump to remote learning. It'll be very disruptive to learning. The best thing we can do to keep schools open, keep everyone there in person, and to have the continuity of learning and recovery of learning is to get vaccinated if you're eligible, to wear your face covering everybody. Uh, that's what avoids the disruptions and the needs for parents to go find you know, child care for two weeks at a time every six to eight weeks on an outbreak. So together, we actually do things that help each other. That's that sense of common good that I think is being lost in all of the talking points and all of the rhetoric. Uh, that we see coming at us just about every day now. That is Chris Rakedahl, State School Superintendent. We thank you so much for your time and uh, appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Aaron. Take care. You too.